Thank you for tuning in for our first ever live episode of Bobby's World. Yes. All right. <laughs> hey. hey. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain. Not one bit. Are you? I'm good. Aside from it being crazy hot out here in LA, you know, that's my one complaint, but that's it. It's not really a complaint. I'm in Miami, so. Oh, shit, you in Miami. Okay. Yeah. Yo, that's what's up. How's it going out there? It's good, man. I mean, everything is everything. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, you know what I'm saying? Well, thank you for joining us on our first ever live for my podcast, Bobby's World. I'm really happy to have you here with us today. Of course, of course. Thank you for having me. So can you give um, our audience a little background on who you are, introduce yourself, tell them, you know, a little bit about yourself and what makes you you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, guys, everyone who's here. Um, I'm Rafael Castillo. Or Rafi So Dope, or Rafi, whatever it is that you want to call me. Um, I'm an actor and a uh, poet. Um, you can see me on uh, Black Lightning, on Netflix, uh, on Sisters on BET, and hopefully a lot more once this whole quarantine is over with. But yeah. Right? God willing. God willing. God willing. <laughs> yes, I see me as one. That's what's up. So, um, also, something that is really important to me, and also why I asked you to join us on the podcast, is because you are Dominican as well, yes. and I think that it's really important for people to get to know our people. I think that within the last few years, people are starting to understand more about the Caribbean culture, and that it's not just Puerto Ricans, it's not just Cubans. There's other yeah. people up in here, and we're There's ready to lot. get people to the pie, you feel me? There's a lot, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And then, you know, to to get a little more in depth with that, um, another reason why I wanted to bring you on here is because, you know, as I said, you are Dominican. So I feel that you probably face some issues that I probably dealt with myself, whether, you know, it might be racism or dealing with colorism from yeah. our own community and also externally. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about that? I mean... Yeah, I think undoubtedly anyone, anyone in our community, especially if you if you're of color, if you're Afro Latino, has dealt with it at some point, whether it be from you know family members directly or or from people outside of your family. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know about you, but growing up, I've always had this difficulty of having to explain like, oh, I'm Dominican, and like, yes. oh, you don't look Dominican, you know, just things yes. like that. And, yeah, or like, or, or you know, just th that type of ignorance. It's it's definitely a, a common thing in in our culture, unfortunately. But hopefully, you know, as time changes, it changes. You know. Absolutely, I think that's why it's really important for us to have these open discussions so that people understand where we're coming from and how we can change these things. Because, you know, I don't think that people realize how certain comments like that can affect people. Um, where did you grow up, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I grew up in Atlanta, in Atlanta, Georgia, oh. where, so I spent most of my life, and then um, at about 15 years old, I moved to Miami, so it's kind of like a split between the two. Yeah. Do you feel like once you moved to Miami, things shifted a little bit because Miami is so Caribbean-based? Um, It shifted, but you meet new difficulties, you know what I'm right. saying? Yes. So, like... Um, it was no longer a question of, are you Hispanic? I don't believe you're Hispanic. Now it's a thing of like, now you're dealing with the Hispanic versus the Hispanic. You know what I'm yes. saying? Because like, you know, just Miami is definitely a majority Hispanic, which is one thing I like about it. But it's also, it introduces you to a a, a new world of, of problems, if you will. Like, right. now you're dealing with Hispanics that are racist to darker Hispanics. Yes. And, no, and it's kind of like you. a normalized thing. And it's like, it's unfortunate, definitely. But yeah, that's that's probably my least favorite thing about it. Other than that, though, Miami, what I love about Miami is the culture. Like Miami, so, there's so much culture in this city. Yeah. And it's so diverse. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, Miami, no one's ever, like, I think I grew up in the school I went to. Very few people were just American. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm... 
I'm Cuban, I'm Jamaican, I'm Puerto Rican, I'm this, I'm that, I'm Brazilian. Like, it's so diverse, so there's so much culture. And that's what I really, really, really appreciate about Miami that you probably don't get in a lot of the cities in, in the United States, except for maybe, like, New York and a little bit Cali, you know what I'm saying? Like, but... Well, I was going to say, actually, in Cali, we can't even say that because, see, growing up, I was born and raised in California my entire life. So for literally the majority of my life, there weren't other Dominicans. So I always had to deal the, deal with the whole, you're not Hispanic, and having yeah. other Hispanic kids judge me or not wanting to befriend me because they didn't understand Dominican. And to them, there was no such thing. It was like, you're Black, and I don't accept that, and that's that. And yeah. then I had the Black kids that were always actually very kind to me and very loving towards me, and they didn't give a damn what the fuck I was. They just said, hey, yeah. you look like me, and I fuck with it, and that's that. So I was always very grateful for them because I'm like, you guys don't judge me. You guys don't exclude me. And I thank you for that. But growing up in California, there isn't a lot of diversity with the Hispanic communities. It's yeah. majority Mexican. Then you have some Central Americans, and that's literally about it. So Yeah, I was about I to say, like, kind of, I was know, about to say, you're so, the first Dominican that I've ever met that is, like, from California. <laughs> yeah, born and raised. That's what I'm saying. Like, now as an adult, now I see more Dominicans and oddly enough, it's actually most of them that are in the industry that are trying to, you know, come out here to do acting, do modeling. And yeah. It's really, really nice because, you know, I, as I said at the beginning of this live, it's nice that Dominicans are proud. We're here and we're ready to be like, yo, y'all need to see us. Y'all need to hear us. Like, yeah. we're here to represent our people and we deserve representation, you know? So yeah. it's, it's really nice, but I do wish that I would have had that growing up. And then for yeah. me, whenever I would go, like, let's say to the East Coast, then because I was raised in California, then going to the East Coast, I faced something different. Then I faced the, you're not Dominican enough. You don't got an accent or you don't got this, <laughs> you don't got that. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, there's always, there's always something, man. There's always I'm just something, like, man. Our people. Can I live? You know? Yeah, yeah. But definitely, I mean, one thing I do appreciate about our generation personally is that I see that, like, we're growing more accepting of of our blackness. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like, yes. I, I I definitely grew up having that difficulty of like, oh, am I black? Am I Dominican? Am I Hispanic? Like, and there were points in my life where I would like really fight it. Like, no, nah, I'm Dominican. I'm Dominican. But like, you know, as you grow, you kind of understand like it's not just one or the other. It's both. You know what right. I mean? And you kind of learn to be proud of that. And that's what I'm loving about our generation and what I'm seeing on social media nowadays. Like, you have Dominicans that are like, yo, I'm Dominican, but I'm Black, and I'm proud to be a Black Dominican. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I like, agree. and I love that. I love that because, like, it, it, it teaches, it's something where, like, you begin to love yourself more because there are certain parts of, of yourself that, like, because of your upbringing and, and those that you sur were surrounded with growing up where you start to kind of hate certain parts of you. You know what I mean? Like, I I hated the fact that my hair was nappy and like all my brothers and sisters had good ass hair. Like you know what I'm saying? Like really? I hated and, those things. And like even that, I think that's something that people need to also understand about our culture for the people that might not be Hispanic or for the people that are of other um Hispanic cultures that in the Dominican culture we have that discussion just like in the black community of good hair, bad yeah, hair. Yeah, that's definitely, and, man. Definitely. And, Oddly enough, like for me, I've always had, you know, my curly hair. I was one of the few kids that didn't want to get their hair pressed out. And yeah. for me, it was like I was always open to just be natural. But yeah. I would get certain family members that would be like, yes, a fellow malo. Like, why don't you straighten it like yeah. your cousins? Why don't you do this? And I would be confused because I'm like, I love my hair. Like, what's wrong with my hair? Why don't you love my hair? You get yeah. it? But it's like, it's it's exactly what you were saying. Like, some people aren't. Or, or maybe at that point in their lives weren't open to embrace yeah. their roots, you know? Yeah, and it's just certain things, like certain language that I'm I'm glad that we're slowly changing. Like, ese pelo malo. Like, there, no, it's not bad hair. It's just exactly. different texture, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, and, I, and we're starting to see that as a, com yeah. as a community and as, as younger people. So, like, for me, it's like we just got to aim to be the change that we want to see, you know what I'm saying? I feel like we're doing that successfully. Um, there are still things that we got to do better at, but like at the same time, like I see growth, and that's what really, like, really makes me feel good about who I am and who we are as a people in general. 
Yeah, a thousand percent. It's I, I think it's just really important for us to continue to have these conversations because some people are either just not aware of what's going on because yeah. maybe it doesn't it doesn't affect them directly yeah. or flat out people are just in denial about it. But I yeah. think that the more that we discuss it, it's something that hopefully we can kind of get rid of as a whole because there's no reason for a child to be talk to about good and bad hair you know yeah. that's something that's something that yeah. naturally grows from your body why yeah. why is it bad just because it may not look like someone else's you know like yeah. that's not something that kids should be even learning to be honest i agree wholeheartedly and like sometimes it and that's the thing like sometimes it doesn't even come from a place of malice it's just the language that we've used always and you know just yeah. kind of i guess reconditioning ourselves and you know what i'm saying like it, yeah that, that bad hair like you know what I'm saying? You're too dark or, you know what I'm saying? Oh, don't play outside too long because you're going to get dark. Like, it's like, yeah. so what? <laughs> yeah. So what? You know that, what I'm saying? That's something, too, that Dominican people go through a lot, you know? Like, my family's from the campo, which for, for people who don't, you know, uh, speak Spanish, the campo basically is like the countryside. So in yeah. the countryside, you know, you... You don't have many options but to be outside, you know? Yeah. But unfortunately, people do have that that uh, belief of like, oh, I can't be outside too much. Let me let me be in the shade more. Let me let me just not do as as many outdoor activities. You yeah. name it. But it is a thing. It is very for much fear of for fear of something that, that happens naturally. Like you're in the sun, you get darker. That color yeah. goes away when you're not in the sun. And it's just like yeah, it's just kind of like an ignorant mentality that, you know. It's unfortunate, but it's like burst through generations. But like I said, like there's slowly a change. We're like, yo, we're proud of like I'm proud of this. Yeah. I'm proud of this. I'm proud of my my nappy hair that doesn't curl the way you want it to curl. It doesn't go straight. Like you know, it's 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 a good it's it's good to see the change. You know what I mean? I agree. I agree. Let's see. Somebody wanted to chime in. Uh, let's see what they said. So Lex is saying, um, growing up, my abuela definitely told me not to play outside and only stay in the shade. See, yeah, yeah. that's something that a lot of people go through or yeah. went through in their childhood. So it's, I it's, think in our culture, yeah, it's definitely something you hear a lot, it's, it's without a doubt. And I was going to say, even colorism, it's not even just a thing even about uh, with Dominicans, because I've, I've got a lot of friends that are um, like of Asian descent, and even in their community, it's also a thing with colorism you know if you're a darker yeah. shade you're not considered as pretty or you know at a younger age you're told to use bleaching creams and things like that which yeah no I'm, bro colorism is worldwide without a doubt worldwide. like any, anybody who wants to go ahead and google beautiful woman and tell me how long it takes for you to find a black woman you know what i'm saying like colorism no. is worldwide like I've, yeah. I've, I've scrolled like it took a little minute like longer than it should have you know what i'm saying yeah. like and that's, that's unfortunate, but it's something, you know what I'm saying, that that society has ingrained so deep into it that, like, it's going to take a lot to change it. But it starts with that positive talk and that kind of, you know, positive affirmation. Like, yo, like, there's nothing wrong with your skin. There's nothing wrong with your nose being a little bit wider. That doesn't make you ugly. That doesn't make you, you aren't bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. my guy Chris was good. It's my homie Chris. <laughs> He's one of my castmates on Black Lightning. Hey. Um, so happy that they could join. <laughs> but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Colorism is definitely something worldwide that that is so ingrained into society that that slowly we're starting to see a change. That's why I like I don't feel too negative about it because I'm slowly seeing the change and like people are getting called out about it now. You know what I mean? And and especially I'm happy you know that people are getting called out about it because yeah. that goes back to what I was saying earlier that it's like some people it's either flat out they're not aware of what they're saying. And then other people, it's just flat out, you know, ignorance and they just yeah. need it to be drawn to their attention, you know, but that's why we need to continue to talk about it. And that, that's, uh, that's a fact though, because I, I remember um, through, because of everything that's going on, I'm speaking to more and getting, you know, asked more from my friends that um, might not be minorities or my white friends or, you know what I'm saying, my friends of lighter complexion or like, even in Miami, even though you're Hispanic, if you're white, you're still the majority because all the, everybody here is Hispanic. And I'm, right. I'm, I'm speaking to these people and they're kind of like, you realize like, sometimes this doesn't come from a place of malice, but from a place of ignorance. Yes. You know and what I mean? think that it's also really important for people to remember that because 
we don't want to necessarily attack these people. I think that it's really important to create a safe space where we could have these discussions because I think that when we start to attack people, that's yes. when people shut down and then they yes. don't want to have the conversation anymore. And the whole point of this is for us to continue to talk about it to where we can just all the way get rid of yeah. it. So I think that we need to remember that. I, you know, I'm not saying we got to give it to people easy. I'm not saying that, but I am. No, saying, yeah, just, but just not the necessarily goal, attack. Yeah, the goal should be to educate. And then it only becomes a problem when someone refuses that education that you're trying to give them. Yes. You know what I mean? Because I've, I've definitely talked to a lot of people where they're like, they'll debate me and I'll sit down and I'll get like a bit stern, like, no, this is what I go through. This yeah. is what happens to me. And you can ask 10 other people that look like me and they will tell you it happens to them too. And then it's like a whole new world opens up because sometimes like, sometimes your problems are the biggest problems. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can get mad because my car broke down on the highway, but there's someone who's waiting for a bus that broke down. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like, oh, I'm not thinking about that problem because I think my problem is, is the biggest thing in the world right now. And yeah. because of that mentality that you have and it's natural, it's not something that, like you should feel completely bad about. Sometimes what you're going through is big to you, but you have to be open and understanding to, to receive the information that like, hey, you're going through this, but someone's going through way worse. Right. You know what I mean? Like there are people that are like, yo, I'm sick of being home because I want to go outside and I'm sick of this quarantine. And then there are also people like, yo, I'm sick of seeing people that look like me die. You know what I mean? Yes. And it's just like, just a simple thing of understanding because like at that moment, that problem is your biggest problem and you can, you can be kind of ignorant to everything and, and not willing to accept that information. But if you're open, then I'm willing to give it to you. And that's where I, that's where I'm worried about those people. Anybody right. that's closed out and doesn't want to listen and doesn't want to take that information in, I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about the people that want to listen to me, hear me out, and understand my, my position. I agree. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind me asking, since, you know, I know that you're in the industry, um, how do you feel about inclusion? I think the industry, it's definitely changing for the better. You know what I mean? We're seeing things in the industry that some people wouldn't even dream of. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have moments, like, where the first Oscar winner, African-American Oscar winner, Hattie McDaniel, she wasn't allowed to sit with everyone. And she's a nominated actress. Like, she wasn't just invited to the Academy. She's a nominated actress for a great, you know, a movie that's world-renowned. And she wasn't allowed to sit with everyone. She, she won the award was allowed, hey, come on, get your award, give your little speech, and then go back to where you are. Yeah. To nowadays where you have, like, you have people that look like us hosting the Oscars and, and, you know, different things like that. So I definitely think that the industry is changing for the better. There are still things that need to be worked on, of course, but that comes with yeah. time, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think one of my, my favorite thing about the industry is that I'm starting to see more black leads. That's you know what, what I'm saying? I'm, I'm starting I'm to see... Saying. Stories not just, about not just in a regular lead role, but in yeah. powerful lead yeah. roles, successful characters, yeah. characters that are badass that are making changes. You know, yeah. characters that the younger generation can look up to. Absolutely, you know? absolutely, and it's and it's definitely you know more opportunity, and it, and it gives you a positive feeling, and it's the roles that these people are playing too. Like you know, you have popular shows like Insecure. Where it's just about a black girl that's insecure. Like, she has her regular life difficulties. It's not about some trauma. It's not about, like, because that's what, it, that's what you know, it, it, it was earlier. Where, like, if you're, you're in a black story, it's got to be about some pain. You know what I'm right. saying? It's like, right. it's no longer like that. Like, yo, yeah. no, nah, I just, I happen to be black. I'm black. I'm proud of you black. But th my, my story is about how awkward I am. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, and I love that. I love that so much because it's like, not everything, yo, I think being black is beautiful, man. Like, this is a privilege, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, a thousand not, my story isn't all pain, you know what yes. I mean? There's some dope shit about being black that we can talk about, you know what I mean? And it's like, that's one of my favorite things. What up, Lydia? So it's like, I, that's, that's, that's like, I, I love that. I love that, that I'm seeing that more in the industry and it, it's, it's opening up and you're seeing more opportunity and like, Yes. You got movies like like Black Panther, which is just like a black superhero, and it's yes. like showing Africa in this dope light, and it's like you know what I'm saying, like things like that is so beautiful to me because it shows how open the industry is becoming. I think that 
it's also really important for us to tell, you know, the, the kids, the younger kids that to not be scared of their, their talents, their creativity. I think it's really important for them to go out there and to also create their own opportunities because that's also what's helping us to get noticed. You know, don't wait, don't wait to be included. Make that, make that role for yourself. You know, you want to be in a movie, create it. Don't wait for them to give it to you. Make it, you know? You see Issa Rae, like, what she has done with Insecure is absolutely beautiful, you know? Oh, it's, it's amazing, it's man. Created. And it's inspiring. Yes, it really is. It really is. And it, it makes you feel like anything is possible. And I, I think that it's really important for these kids to know that it is possible. As long as you put the hard work into action, you can make anything you want for yourself, you know? Yeah, definitely. And then you, and you see that. You see that through... You know, some examples that we have, you, Lena Waif is, is a great example. Like, look at what she's doing in the industry. I think she has, like, no exaggeration, like, five active TV shows right now. Yeah. That she's the showrunner. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's amazing, bro. Like, that's, that's like, what? And then the story she's telling, like, they're valid stories. Just like, like, not, and, and not just, you know, oh, hood, sorry, like, nah, not that yeah. same tired, like, that whack stuff, like she's talking, like I don't know if you've seen it, but Twenties on BET, I think it's yes. that show is super dope. Like I love, bro, that, that show is dope. Yes. And it's like, yeah, I can't like, wait for the new season. <laughs> yeah, man, like I stumbled upon that by accident, but I watched nothing. Oh no, I got, I think I watched the whole season in like one day. You know what Thanks. I mean? It's like Thanks. it's it's so good, and it's, those stories are important. Those stories are important because like you're telling the black story in all facets. Yes, you know what I'm saying, like. And it, it it makes it more relatable and it humanizes us, because yes. you know throughout throughout history, you know the media has definitely found a way to dehumanize it us as a people. But you you find our ways to tell our stories and like here's what we have for you to digest and for you to understand my plight or whatever. Not even my plight, just my life. Yeah. And it's like it's relatability. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's like oh I've been through that. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're the same. Okay, we're the same. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, we're all people. We're all people, and we all people who go through that shit. Part. You know what I mean? And then that's that's I think one of the most beautiful things about the art in general, speaking specifically about acting and filmmaking. Like at the end of the day, you're a person, and yeah. you have a story. And there's yeah. something about your story that is unique. And there's something about your story that is so unique that everyone would listen if you want if you want to tell it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Ah. Oh. I just want to thank you so much. Like, seriously, thank you for coming on here. Thank you for being open to talk about these things that we need to talk about. I, I just can't stress it enough. We need yeah. to talk about it. We cannot be quiet. Um, I don't know about you, but, you know, I've dealt with many situations where people do try to, you know, silence my story or try to make it seem less valid. And I think that it's it's important for us to talk about this. And we have yeah. to be positive in this situation because it has opened the floor for discussion, you know, where most of us would be continue to be silenced. And we just need more of this. We need more of this until we see change, the change yeah. that we want to see. And we yeah. got to keep going, you know, moving forward. A thousand percent. And, and the, the conversations are being had. And that's the important part. Like, these are things that are being talked about. People are speaking up. We're being vocal. Like I said earlier, I think our generation is that beginning of the change we want to see in the world. And I think the generations that follow are going to add more sauce into it, more sauce into it, more sauce until like 50 years later. It's a whole new world where like we're not dealing with the, the small and dumb stuff that we're still dealing with today. You know what I'm saying? God willing. God Remy's. willing. Gotta create a whole new world for these kids, you know? Yeah, man, we will. I think we'll we'll be good, man. Life is life is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? This whole opportunity we get to live is beautiful. I think that once we all understand that and, and we kinda grasp that, we'll understand that all this other stuff is petty, ignorant, like insignificant stuff. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And and we'll definitely grow past that. These conversations, like I said, they're being had. We're communicating. We're telling stories. People are listening too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we got we got some very important people watching closely and and you know backing everybody on this. And 
that's even really important as well you know we need everybody to take part in this right now you know it doesn't matter how small you think you are it doesn't matter if you're that one kid that's in the hood and you think nobody's gonna listen to you it's important to still speak up yeah. and stand for what's right because yeah. at the end of the day everybody deserves equality and everybody deserves inclusion and, and to get proper representation so it's it's go time we're yeah. not stopping you know like yeah. i think everybody also needs to remember that it's not just you know a week of this you know this is something that everybody's been dealing with for many many years and we got to keep going we have to keep going yeah definitely and we will we will i'm confident that we will yes sir now i know that that you only had a little bit a little bit of time so before we wrap up um yeah. would you like to share any upcoming projects with the people um i'm working on some things i can't speak on it right can't now okay. but i mean i'll just say if you're interested follow my page follow my journey i've definitely got some projects coming up um I'm venturing into music a little bit, uh, Ooh, giving that a try, nice. and it's pretty fun so far. So, you nice. know, maybe hopefully I'll be able to release a track soon or something like that. But um, as of now, just stay tuned and, and know that some good shit is coming. That's good what's up. Yes. Now, for the people who might not be following you at the moment, can you please let them know where they can find you? Yeah. Um. On, Yes hopefully in black lightning season four hey. um uh rafi so dope on pretty much anything except twitter on twitter i am rafael oh no it's uh what is it? i don't even know what it is it's like rafael castillo official or official rafael castillo one of those two i don't know i'll put it in my bio for y'all to see um but yeah yeah um definitely rafi rafi so dope pretty much everywhere else though so. Perfect. So for anybody that might not have uh, caught this live from the beginning, this live is going to be active for the remainder of the day. But we are also going to transfer it over to YouTube and um, the audio will be available on all social media platforms. So please stay tuned because we talked about some really important things and it's really, really important that y'all, you know, take part in the conversation and that you guys check it out so please stay tuned like i said if you guys didn't get to catch it it will be available for you guys thank you so much once again for joining us really appreciate you of as course, a person we appreciate your time and we're so excited to see you know where you where you go next we we appreciate you sharing your gifts and your creativity with the world because we need more of that we need thank more you. of that thank you and thank you for having me i appreciate your platform continue to do this uh many success and a lot of blessings your way thank you yes sir thank you so much you have a wonderful rest of the day and bendiciones to you and yours my love all right take care all right bye bye